Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk a little bit about NS Savannah, which is a really cool near contemporary of Battleship New Jersey that um, is available to be turned into a museum ship. We got invited to take a tour of her on May 17th, which is one of a few days every year that she's open for tours. Now, some of you guys who have been interested in museum ships for a while will remember that she was for a while uh, displayed as a museum ship at Patriots Point, South Carolina. Following a yard period in the early 1990s, she left Patriots Point and ended up in my hometown of Baltimore, but uh, was not a part of the other museum ships there and was only open on a limited basis. What makes Savannah special is her nuclear reactor, but that also made it difficult to have her open to the public. And so control of her has remained with MARAD, the Maritime Administration, and uh, they have been working for years to completely defuel the ship and make her safe to give to another entity to operate. She's been safe enough all along to allow tours on board, but not being at one of the public piers in Baltimore, it, it's relatively rare that she's open to the public. She is open many times a year, but like compared to ships like Battleship New Jersey where we're open seven days a week, year round, uh, it, it's a more limited schedule. I got the chance to tour her for the first time over a decade ago when I was still working in Baltimore. And the ship need, did work. It had been two decades easily since she had last been open to the public on a daily basis down in South Carolina. And there were things like uh, water intrusion problems and carpet peeling up and paint coatings that needed to be renewed. And while you could see some of the engine room and reactor control stuff, you couldn't actually see the nuclear reactor for obvious reasons. But what I love about the preservation of this ship is that they have been constantly, constantly working towards making her better. I was absolutely blown away by her condition uh, on May 17th, 2025, when we went and visited her. It was clear that Marad and the folks that volunteered their time to help preserve the ship have been working towards getting that ship open for a very long time. She was in significantly better condition than the last time I saw her. And um, more of the ship was open, more of the ship was restored, there was more signage up. And this is incredible because Marad doesn't intend to operate her as a museum. They are currently looking for a new home city or uh, a new nonprofit or operator to take her over and actually operate her for the public. They're conducting a search right now to take applications for folks who want to uh, operate this ship. When I say operate, I mean as a permanently moored uh, museum. And something that they have done really well that you don't often get with uh, ships that are being uh, turned over to museums. Like the, the Navy did not in any way get Battleship New Jersey ready to be a museum. Uh, they demilitarized some stuff when it was determined that she was gonna be turned over to a nonprofit. Uh, but really that made it more difficult for the museum to open up because it made a mess of some things. But Marad, unlike that, has been working towards getting the ship ready so that really she is turnkey. You, you get this ship and you can open her up to the public as soon as you've finished whatever uh, local restrictions you have on wh whatever fire suppression system or exit lights or any of that sort of stuff that all of these ships have to handle um, when, when they come to their new home city. Anyway, I think it was a really cool concept that they were able to work towards getting her ready to go. And uh, something that I wish all museums got that kind of support when they were first opening up. Uh, Battleship New Jersey spent millions of dollars after acquiring the ship to repaint her and do all sorts of work. And it took decades for us to catch up on that work. Things like dry docking and uh, replacing the deck that was already badly deteriorated by then. Uh, much less setting up tour routes and installing exhibits and signage and things like that. Uh, so, so this ship is nearly ready to go. Some of the cool things that we got to see while we were on board, and unfortunately we weren't able to film a bunch of videos on site uh, because of the, the tour we were getting, but we got some B-roll that we'll talk through right now. 
Uh, but some of the cool things we got to see, that obviously the work that they've been doing in the reactor compartment, that's why you're going to visit the nuclear ship Savannah. Savannah was the first and to this day only civilian operated nuclear powered cargo ship in the United States. A couple of other countries did a similar system, but uh, Savannah is the only American one. She has a great connection to President Eisenhower, who um, obviously a World War II general. World War II ends with the use of atomic bombs. Well, he comes up with the idea of atoms for peace in the 1950s, and one of the ways to showcase that is to put this uh, nuclear power plant on a merchant ship. Information about the beneficial uses of atomic energy knows no national boundaries. The facts are available today, for nuclear energy isn't waiting to help people everywhere in some brave new world of the future. The peaceful atom is here now to serve what President Eisenhower has termed the needs rather than the fears of mankind. Now, Savannah feels like what the people of the 1950s thought the future was going to look like. She is so very Jetsons or Star Trek in a lot of the things that you're going to see when you're on board the ship. Uh, and and the, the mix of this unique propulsion system, there's only one other nuclear ship in the United States that's preserved as a museum, the submarine Nautilus, and you cannot go anywhere near her reactor compartments. And uh, just the, the mid-century Americana kind of decorations. Savannah was kind of a hybrid ship. She had cargo holds for cargo carrying, but she also had uh, some state-of-the-art cabins for passengers on board. And so uh, she has a lot of the same time period Americana type fittings that uh, were lost on the United States when she was gutted and will be doubly lost when the United States is uh, sunk as an artificial reef. So that makes it even more important that we save Savannah as a representative of this time period. It was interesting seeing those sorts of passenger staterooms on Savannah because they look so different from the birthing compartments on Navy ships like New Jersey. In addition to those passenger compartments, obviously there are several large cargo holds. These cargo holds have a tremendous amount of internal volume. It makes them great spaces for a lot of things. Um, the hatches open up so you can put large macro artifacts in there. Uh, for example, they have a couple of different uh, large pieces of uh, maritime machinery that are going to be part of an exhibit one day. So th there's room for exhibits in these spaces. It's also great for event spaces. Uh, many museum ships, including Battleship New Jersey, have um, hold events on board like weddings, retirement ceremonies, corporate parties, th things like that. And uh, Savannah comes with all that economic possibility. Uh, likewise, these spaces are great for things like scouting encampments. And Battleship New Jersey has 1,600 beds on board. We use those for overnights. But ships like the aircraft carrier Intrepid, uh, which don't, uh, because of local regulations, don't allow guests to sleep on the beds down inside the ship, have those encampments on their hangar decks. And Savannah could very easily do something similar with her cargo holds. So I'm, I'm seeing all the same potential with this ship that other museum ships have had. Uh, going back to the, the uh, nuclear stuff, again, that's the main reason why you're gonna go and visit this ship. And uh, they've done a ton of work making the reactor compartment clean enough for people to go in. So this was my first time visiting her that we were actually able to go into that space and get a tour. And obviously a lot of things have been removed, but they've come up with this really great visual display to, to show what used to be there. And they let you walk through all of that. And even more cool than the reactor compartment was getting to see the reactor control area, which was this, this great uh, color-coded control booth that uh, looks exactly the same as what you would see in like a landside nuclear power plant. Uh, and then from there, you could get into the engine room, which again, steam turbines very similar to Battleship New Jersey's, but a um, little bit newer, 
a little bit smaller because she's not intended to attain the same high speed as we do, uh, and all color coded. It's really cool how they chose to color code the system. Uh, remember, this ship was designed as a showpiece for Adams for Peace. Uh, so it was designed to be able to bring guests and dignitaries and whatnot on board, give them a tour. So there's all sorts of like glass overlooking areas to look down into the engine room and uh, these sorts of spaces. And they intended it to be filmed in the 1950s and 60s. That often meant black and white film. And so the colors chosen for these, very bright and vibrant, which is weird for a government ship, weird for an engine room, uh, but would give you really good contrast on black and white film. Or even when you get to Technicolor film, now you can say, hey, this purple thing here is this system, and this yellow thing here is this system. It's very different from the color coding in the engine room on New Jersey, where certain pipes are certain colors, but the equipment itself isn't. The ship's bridge is much more open than on Battleship New Jersey. When the ship's propulsion plant was rendered inactive, when the ship was defueled and had a bunch of stuff removed, they also removed the propeller to blank over the gland seal where the propeller shaft came out at the stern. And one of the ship's propellers, she only had one attached to the ship. However, they made two so that if something happened to the one they had to spare, one of those two propellers is now on display on the deck of the ship so you can see it. And that's one of the things I like being a cargo ship. They have space on deck for objects like that. They have space in the hold for objects like that. And, and they've already started to collect these sorts of macro artifacts that are going to be the core of that museum's collection when she is actually operated and open full time. Savannah really is a unique museum ship experience. She will not be the only merchant marine type vessel, uh, the only cargo type vessel preserved as a museum ship. But many of the ones that are preserved, the Red Oak Victories and the John W. Browns, are preserved in their context as being World War II ships, which is absolutely important to talk about. Uh, but they're, they're discussed in the context of moving military equipment. Because of Savannah's inclusion in the Adams for Peace program, she was not moving military equipment, like specifically. They tried to stay as far away from military stuff as possible. And so that uh, role as a historically significant, but still completely civilian ship, uh, particularly one from the post-war 1950s and 60s uh, time period, is really important to save and to be able to have the public visit, especially since we are losing United States, which was another engineering marvel from that time period. And again, uh, Savannah is not gutted, so a lot of her internal fittings and accommodations and things like that are still completely intact. If you're interested in learning more about acquiring Savannah for your uh, area, we left the link in the below with uh, Marad's bulletin on uh, her being up. Additionally, we left another link down there to Savannah's website if you want to donate to the great ongoing restoration work that she's getting, and also uh, if you want to see when she's open to visit. You should definitely make the effort to go to Baltimore and get a tour of her uh, when she's open next. Have you ever been on board Savannah? Let us know in the comments section down below. Tell us about your experience walking around the ship, but also let us know when you've been on board. Like I said earlier, She's in way better shape now than she was 10 or 15 years ago when I last went on. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. Instead of supporting us, check out the link in the description below to support Savannah and the ongoing restoration work to turn her back into a permanently open museum ship. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about our museum and the channel. Thanks for watching.